symbolic. You know, it, it's like, to me, I don't care if, the, if it was there or not, because if a lot of people start believing in it, then it's there somewhere. And that's how this whole thing works. It's all wet work. Once you want people start to concentrate on something, it actually becomes it exists, even if it's just for a moment and it can be tapped into. And where that originally what that originates from is that concept of as above, so below. They say as as done on heaven, as, as done in heaven, also on earth. You see, so there's just just a way of another way of actually creating something without having to actually build it physically. You can build it in others' minds, okay? And so what happens with this is, is that where all this comes from, okay? Because we're at the end of time now. And it's not the end of the time like the doomsday revelations. It's at the end of the point that we even consider time as a factor. And that's how gravity gets canceled. So does ideas of space. And that's why, you know, we see all this darkness, but what happens when everything comes together? So I'll tell you right now that the ones that are clinging to this, they're clinging to this as if it's the last that they have. What CERN is really doing, and I didn't talk about this last show because just so many people were drilling on it, they didn't, they didn't get it. So I just kind of sit back and see who's going to get it because if somebody gets it, that means I know that they're tapped in. But the final thing that everyone missed out was when you release dark matter. See, that's what they're doing. They're releasing dark matter into the realm. This is like putting an exhaust pipe into someone's window. If they're not the kind of being that knows how to be able to deal with that kind of energy, because what dark matter is, is it's energy that needs it's in desperate need of being recycled. So those who can turn negative into positive, they actually deal with dark matter. And these are the most powerful, if you want to just put it on that kind of scale. It's like those who can turn negative to positive, duh, they're the most powerful because they can take a horrible situation and then turn it into roses. So that, that's what we're talking about as far as converters and beings that actually consume energy. See, our, our bacteria, they do that already. That's the frequency of what we're talking about. You can identify that it exists because you have millions of organisms that actually do that. So what we're talking about, though, is, is that at the end of Ouroboros' tail, which is that old serpent, Jugger, what they're talking about is a being in specific that we can't even really isolate ourselves from because all is self. So it's just best to understand the story because if you don't understand the story and the tale, you can't get out of the maze. You need to actually go through. And remember, this is we're talking about hyperdimensional being here. Go through it. That's why I say, hey man, you need to you need to have a breakthrough. You need to get through it. Because if you don't get through it, then you'll never know your true origin. You'll never actually have the most backed up, meaning the, the, the core of the files, the source. You won't have that source file. Now this source is every bit of a sorcerer because at the height of externalism, see that's Ouroboros' tale. There were spaceships, there was time travel, there was self-replication. There was genetic manipulation and cloning. There was downloading, uploading, and reloading. You see, everything that we're, we're speeding towards now, right? Think about those laboratories in Germany. Just be the, the fly on the wall. Look in the room. See kind of equipment that they're using. They're not just finding, searching for telomeres and how to regenerate telomeres. This is about time travel. This is, this is the big game. Why most people are still sitting back, bickering amongst themselves, completely routed, not thinking, functioning on fuzzy logic, stuff that's not even real. There's the end of the tale or the story actually taking place right now of the dying God. Now, why do I call it a dying God? Because the word die comes from the word deuce. The word deuce or die means two, as in two die or two dice. So... That two, those dice, those two squares, okay, are what's known as the divided God. 
This is Deuce Pater. This is in the Vatican, in the center of the labyrinth, lies the Minotaur. That is du- that's Deuce, the horn god, the king. He's dead though. That's why I said the king, he's dead. It's because he's divided. It's the last backup of the sentient being that was here that found itself inside of this rept- receptacle that when you say we're the children of, because I'm not trying to get people to associate themselves with something, I'm telling you it owns the bodies. It was the Lord of the flesh. And on top of that, it's not a man either. For some who are trying to blame and so I knew it, the men, it's not a man. It's more like an androgen. So the reason why it's important to know this story is because in the image, these bodies were made. That's why it says, I created man in my image meaning my backup this is computers here we're talking about basically when you image a file you take the entire log right you take all of the data and you put it somewhere else that's called an image so the image which is our minds that's why i said we gave them our minds the image was our brains that brain is the laboring that's why when you think your thoughts travel down look Look at the science. They look at all this stuff. They'll tell you your thought travels down those corridors like a spark. And if it has enough of the spark stuff to travel into the deep recesses of the mind, a.k.a. the subconscious, it's able to wake up all sorts of things. But and there's a big but to that. If you're going down corridors that don't lead to ways out, that's why in the ancient times they actually had the diagram of the maze which was the corridors of the brain and when you walk through the maze physically it also corresponded you walking through it on the mental level because the men if you see the egyptian god with the long phallus the men was the creator of the physical worlds See, now we know we already come from something greater in a tense, if you want to play that game with yourself, to something greater because we were in the non-physical, we were non-ID. But you need to realize that architect that they keep talking about was and has given the image of its creation, basically everything that it learned through spaceships, time travel, self-replication, cloning, downloading and uploading, which is what those pyramids are about. Because when you really understand this whole thing and you just start sitting back and you just observe the world, not from everything that you've read, but what you know. Because through the physical bodies, you can always tap through the DNA, the entire story. You can tap tap all the information. You can tap time travel. That's what all these spirals and all this geometry ends up leading into. You tap all the major aspects of the actual framework, cloning, all that is all connected into the spirals and the DNA trees how trees grow knowledge from trees all of this stuff is spirals you see so you just basically learn the spiral force but also this is the fire of prometheus by the way so and this is the hammer of thor so if you pick it up or, or you touch it and you don't have the ability to balance out it will destroy you rather fast it will corrupt you corruption is like corrosion it basically fries out all of your rationality. You see what I mean? So this is why it's it's sacred, as they say. You, you're sacred. To be able to reach inside of the holiest of holies of your own temple is real work. It's not a game. It's not something that you just sit around and, oh, I'm going to go and, you know, I'm going to ascend today. You know, good luck with that attitude. So that's, of course, why we're pushed further we're plutonian as a society kept completely away from the idea that there's a source (laughs) and distracted with sports and games and all these fictitious things but no one's or few people are actually really going in because some people say well how do you where do you get all this information i I went in (laughs) you go in long enough eventually it starts to that stuff is so complex so that's why i was saying the the macros the keyholes, the portals, all that stuff is conscious. It's not just there. It's got its own consciousness and frequency to it. And then when you look at it, you're like, wow, there's nothing in our language that actually can describe what I'm looking at. So there's going to be actually no way to transmit back to everyone what exactly I'm looking at here. 
Not to mention, this thing is utterly blowing my mind. I mean, literally, I can't put it in my framework. So then you're, you're tested to leave your skin suit or to cling to it because you're about to die. That's what you feel like. Like, oh my goodness, I'm about to die. I've gone too far. And a lot of people know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh my goodness, I hope I come back. You know, Salivia can even do that kind of thing. Salvia. But listen to what I'm saying here. The reason, because this is specific. That's why we don't have to get into any of the small gods. We don't have to get into any of the small little stories. Because we should just skip the bad guys and go right to the leader. You know, the bad guys can probably be rehabilitated. We need to go to the source of this. And so that's why when people start getting close to it, it just the shit starts happening. Excuse my language. It's like you're facing so much turbulence because all the people who are out there on Pluto, they don't feel anything. And they're even, you know, they even come by in their long orbit. Every now and then they come by you with that whole Plutonian idea that basically we can all sit here forever, ever. And that, you know, basically based on what they're doing and what they're talking about, there's no way we're getting to the source. Right. So you fly by some of them and then you're like, man, why are they not feeling what I feel like last month? The world may not have ended. or My world ended (laughs) like everything about what I believe is going on as far as the facts and how things are tightened down has changed. After September, old ideas died. And ironically, this month I'll be, uh, you know, on the 22nd, I'll be 37. So. This gets me to a point to where it's like, yo, hey, uh, hey, um, uh, buddy, it's this is real deal. You already know it's real deal. You now have to go for the whole thing now. You got to get to the next level and you have to cancel time. So here's how we're going to do it. You need to go through the image. You need to cancel out this image, this mirror, this mirage. See, this is why we were using this word today or you use this word the mirage because the root of this word is actually marriage marriage because it's an illusion no person belongs to another person see the moment that that mirage starts happening that's the root of the biggest issue we're having here on the planet. Once you say this one belongs to me, it means that it can't be someone else's. 